There does not seem to be enough hours in a day to finish all of our work. But even highly successful people are limited by 24 hours in a day. So what do they do differently? Well, the work we produce equals the time of a work session multiplied by the intensity of the work session. And since we all have 24 hours in a day, let's increase the intensity of our work session. Therefore, in this video, I'm going to share with you five science-backed ways to achieve laser-sharp focus. Number one, train your brain away from multitasking. What we call multitasking is really task switching, but it's not an instantaneous switch because your brain needs to load and reload the context of every situation into your working memory over and over again. And this is a waste of mental energy and time. Furthermore, multitasking requires a lot of what's known as your working memory or temporary brain storage. And when the working memory is all used up, it takes away from your ability to think creatively. Number two is to have a designated workspace because your mind needs to know when it's time to study. And it does this by forming a neuro association. For example, you associate your kitchen with food, your bed with sleep, and you want to associate your desk with a place of intense work and focus. One way to form a neuro association is by listening to the same playlist of music every time you study. You want to ensure this area has no distractions. Because according to Miller's theory developed in 1956, your short-term memory can only hold five to nine snippets of information at a time. And you want all of these quote-unquote units of focus to be focused on the task at hand. For example, studying. But then, say you receive a text, automatically one of these units of focus is shifted towards your text. And then you smell pasta, and another unit goes over there. And before you know it, external stimuli have taken up many of your units of focus. And it takes time to bring these units of focus back to the task at hand. So in order to have a productive work session and to have maximum focus, we need to remove all external stimuli that could tamper with your concentration. Tip number three is to set time limits. According to Parkinson's law, work expands to fill the time available for its completion. Therefore, we need to divide and conquer and set time limits and work in those time limits. One technique is the Pomodoro technique in which you decide on a task, set a timer to 25 minutes, and work on the task until the timer rings. Take a short break and repeat this cycle four times, followed by a 20 minute break. The science behind this technique is that it instills a sense of urgency, therefore forcing you to be more focused. Tip number four is to focus on the task and not the result, which is easier said than done. For example, if you're studying for a test and you're very, very worried about the grade, it tampers with your concentration and you're not able to focus on efficiently actually learning the material. Therefore, we want to train our brain into deriving satisfaction from putting in our best effort and not from the result. This is one reason why surgeons often do not do surgery on family members or loved ones, because there's too much at stake. The final tip is to eat well, sleep well, and exercise well. You want to eat nourishing foods and that are whole and rich in vitamins and avoid foods high in artificial sugar as this causes brain fog and decreases your ability to concentrate along with clouding your judgment. Furthermore, studies show that seven to eight hours of sleep are necessary for maximum concentration and focus. And finally, make sure to have some form of physical activity every day as many neurotransmitters such as norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin are released by exercise, which are necessary to focus. To conclude, focus is a skill that you can develop with practice and time. And as Osho said, the mind is a beautiful servant, but a dangerous master. And learning to focus and take control of our own mind might arguably be the most important skill we ever learn. 